Silbury Hill was an interesting little find for me um, well, on my trip to Avebury. Um, I certainly didn't see it last time I was here because I approached Avebury from the other side. And it seems like not that many people come out to Silbury Hill. And I think there's probably a couple of reasons for that. The paths and everything aren't really set up for it. It doesn't look like they really want you to come see it. There's a path that kind of goes semi nearby, but no clear direction of access. In fact, you know, it was just because I was a little bit determined to explore around it that I found that there is actually a little gap in the fence there, you know, that looks like it's designed for you to approach the hill. And then when you get to the hill, there are signs and a fence very clearly saying not to go up um, to the top of the hill. Although, of course, uh, it looks like some people have. Um, I personally respected that and didn't go up. So, um, yeah, but an interesting little feature here. Oh, before I go further, you'll, you'll have to excuse the up close and uh, personal nature of the last... Uh, a couple of videos, I, I forgot to take my selfie stick with me um, when I was coming out here, but hopefully you can stand the closeness of my face. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I read some of the little information they had about the hill before I came out here because it, it really has a presence. Um, as you see it coming in, I thought I really want to go and check that out and see, see what I can find out there. Um, and they really don't know what it was for. They, they say that it's the largest prehistoric man-made structure in Europe. Whether that's true or not, I, I, would, I would think that might be up for dispute with some of the other uh, structures in Europe. But, um, but certainly large in the scheme of things in Europe. Um, they did at one stage, they did tunnel into the hill to try and find out what the story was. It's not a burial mound. There are lots of burial mounds around here and it is not that. Um, they didn't really discover much about it by digging into it other than what it was made of. And basically it's made of different layers of soil and some layers of some limestone. Um, and that's it. They don't really know much about it. Um, in terms of my own experience here, there's definitely, it definitely has a presence. It definitely has an energy to it. Um, being around the hill but not able to go up onto it, uh, there was a clear clockwise pattern of energy circulation around the hill. So whether that's intentional or not, could be. They may have intentionally sighted it because it's next to another, there's like a low-lying hill beside it and they've sort of seated it right in there. They may have done that intentionally to affect the flow. They may have also with their ceremonies affected the flow to, to give it that clear clockwise flow or it may have just been fluke, naturally occurring. Um, the hill itself doesn't seem to have a lot of energy conduction. Um, it's largely just made out of dirt, so that's not surprising. Um, but it's still a presence. It's, it's likely that it had a, a some connection to the other Neolithic structures around here, possibly with Avebury, possibly with some of the others that in some way it may have been placed to interact energetically or certainly within the ceremonies as to ha have some interaction in terms of you know maybe you go to one place first and then to the other something like that um i guess also in terms of 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 what we know about tall places wherever you have something tall it naturally encourages you to look up so it naturally directs your attention towards heaven and whenever you can go up onto something that is tall it naturally gives you an, a clarity and a perspective as you look down and you can see much further around you so high, tall things high places have been used for spiritual purposes you know I think in every culture in the world so possibly is that part of its use I suspect that's part of it it's difficult though without proper access to be able to fully assess something because some 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 places you're able to just by being close to them you can you can tell a lot about the energy 
others you really need to be able to go and stand and move and be where the original people would have been and moved in order to be able to interact fully with the energy and to be able to piece together what it was all about what the what the energy of the place was about or and maybe still is and how it connects to other things around it and of course not able to go up to the top of the hill on this one which is it's a shame it does affect some some sites like this others you have great access you can go right through it and you get a much better a meta, better taste of things um, so at this stage Silbury Hill is still a little curiosity for me a few clues um, I mean not even actually able to walk all the way around it there's a fence that stops you from going all the way around it which is you know uh, limits the energy interaction to some extent as well but interesting to visit interesting to to think about um, definitely a connection there to some of the things around it but um, a bit of a mystery so anyway still fascinating and, and I guess that's somehow how sometimes how it is when you visit different places with interesting energy um, sometimes things are very clear other times you're not able to find out everything that you want but but still interesting to explore all right I hope you enjoyed the video um, probably a very niche audience for this sort of thing if you know someone else who might like watching videos and I guess talking about this sort of thing maybe you could share it with them um, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one